All right, I think we're recording. Yeah, good morning, everybody. It's a little past 6.30. Yeah, 6.35. I know, it's so cold. How cold is it? It's so cold in Atlanta, it took an extra five minutes to brew my coffee. Yeah. Maybe. No, it's not that cold. But anyways, welcome to Quant Box Live. It's about three hours before the open of trading. On Wall Street, it's time to get our global macro on, where we uncover the best fundamental opportunities across the globe. Look at this face. It's the face of an economist. That's what they look like. I know you thought they had horns. No, they don't. No, it's really hard to point one out in a crowd. But anyways, my name is Wayne McDonald. I am the founder, and I created QuantBox because I needed a way to automate all this crazy amount of information fundamental and market sentiment on so many different levels from different points of view, from the OECD to the Fed and to many other places like the CFTC. We gather all this intelligence to formulate a strategy. It's not your get rich process, but you know what it is? It's a confidence builder because you're making informed investing and trading decisions that give you confidence to let your winners run. Hey, it used to be $79 for a light version of QuantBox. I upgraded every single retail subscriber to the professional subscription. Bert, no additional fees. <laughs> Just upgraded everybody. We don't even have a light version. We don't even have a retail version. I just gave it to everybody. You're welcome. So if you're watching this on YouTube, look, half the time I forget to upload it. Too busy. The other half the time, well, it's very, very delayed. Why don't you just swing on by? Why don't you swing on quantbox.co and subscribe? It's not very much money. Is $79 a month worth confidence? Confidence worth $79? Look, I even have a mug. That's how legit. So anyways, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad. It's not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Let's log into the main database. See where we stand. Most markets aren't open yet. I mean, uh, Asia is open and closed now, and then uh, Europe is open. But as far as U.S. markets, they're not quite open quite yet. But anyways, look where we are in a really interesting spot. A couple of months ago, the 10-year T-note was uh, yielding 5%, and now it's not even 4 3.93. I think it's going to fart around here for a while, probably retest 4. Why not? But uh, uh, oil, back to about 72. Remember, it was in the 60s not long ago. It kicked off a roll reversal technically and is showing some up. The interesting thing about the oil market is that we're producing incredible amounts of oil. We're over 13 million barrels now. Holy smokes. 12 was the highest of the highs, and now we're well over 13. So... And we're doing it with less rigs. But once again, that's the production side. Well, what about the storage side? Nope. So uh, uh, very, 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 very interesting market. And is that even sustainable? Remember when you're fracking, you're sucking uh, residual oil out of uh, a dry well, kind of, you know? So at some point, don't you run out of wells? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, America is producing more with less. Thank you, entrepreneurialism. It's the only way to do it. Okay, we got lots of smart people working very, very hard to keep this uh, uh, economy alive. So thank you. Gold. All right. 2000 still. People are trying to figure out uh, what to do with this asset. Right now, I think it's just sort of a dollar play. I don't think anything's going on with gold. Um, you don't need it to hedge. And uh, unless gold watches double in sales, maybe it will. I think we have a stock market that's bullish, but people are nervously bullish, right? So not, probably not a time. 2024 might not be a time to buy your first gold Rolex. So um, 
Hmm. But if the dollar falls, then you need more dollars to buy gold. So it looks like gold's going up, but dollar is just falling. And I think that might be the narrative. I think we're going to have a very complicated 2024. S&P 500, oop, very cool. People are talking about 5,000. Okay. But uh, the, who was it? Dennis Gartman was being interviewed this morning. He was funny because uh, Brian Wilson, uh, I think of Morgan Stanley, is, is a super bear. He's bearish. When things are going up, he's bearish. He's, things are going down, he's more bearish. And uh, last week he said, well, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm bullish now. <laughs> and then Dennis Gartman mentioned, well, if, they, if Wilson says he's bull, sell the whole thing. <laughs> That's it. He's the last bear. If he's gone, sell. So, anyways, I, I get the, I get the, uh, I get the comment. But to like really point it out it is pretty funny, actually. The drag point out like if he's a bull, dump everything. Uh, so, anyways, zero dollar still. You know, one oh nine. We were at one ten. Then we were one six. And then we we're at one seven. Then we we're at one eight. Um, you know, ECB last week tried to play like they're play it really calm and like they're in control and uh, I, I don't think they actually are I think if the US is going to rally up in the next few months uh, euro dollar is going to go up regardless of what's going on and then Bitcoin looked down it was down uh, 3% earlier so now it's only down 2 oh and by the way uh, this morning when I was listening to Bloomberg they, they said oh uh, Nippon Steel is going to buy US Steel it's up $2. And then they do their like 20 minute cycle. They come back around. Nippon Steel is expected to buy US Steel. US Steel is now up 24%. <laughs> like, whoa. Just in 20 minutes, it, it went, it jumped, you know, over 20%. Like, wow. That's called merger arbitrage, by the way. So you'd sell Nippon Steel and you'd buy US Steel. Uh, and if you don't know how that works, uh, watch the movie Wall Street. Yeah, the original one. Gordon Gecko is in merger arbitrage. All right, very cool. Um, all right, let's take a look at the world as it is now. And huh, don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. We got a lot of news this week. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, um, news coming out, and uh, and yet everything is mixed. So don't 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 go crazy. Now, of course, maybe Monday opens and everyone's really feeling good, and there's going to be a Santa Claus rally and stuff like that. But I wouldn't bet on it. So we're looking at the market right this second on three different time frames. Be careful. Don't overdo it. Don't over trade. Okay, this is basically saying whatever you see is not a real opportunity. You might find something. Remember, if you go looking, you will find something. Is that the role of a trader and an investor? No. Okay. So in this case, you should look at it and say, huh, not a lot going on. Now we can do the same kind of analysis from a different point of view. And uh, this looks really flat. Now, we have an outlier here. Bitcoin way down. Okay. Well, that shows you. Well, let me zoom in so it's easier for y'all, all y'all. Um, Bitcoin, huge outlier. Okay. Big, big, big drop. And it, and Quantbox is saying, well, during a risk-on period, that's not great. So maybe that's a buy for tomorrow. So keep your eye. Bitcoin may not necessarily be down. It's just down now. And if you're a bull, you want to buy a dip. We just be careful. Use your technical analysis to see, well, did we just hit a monthly target and it's we're done for December and now it's profit taking? Well, now that's your job. Okay. Quantbox is looking at it economically. Uh, you might be looking at it not from the point of economics, but from market, from the market point of view. So double check. Did we just double top at a at a severe resistance level, massive year-end profit taking is happening, or is it just a 2% dip for you to buy? Well, that's your job. Let's get rid of crypto, kill the outlier, and look at this. And um, okay, what we're what we want to see is something like that. What 
we don't want to see something like that. And we see both. So there's no trend and it confirms what we see. Now, remember, this is completely different methodology. Absolutely. Economic, right? This is the bottom is economic uh, scorecard and the left is market pricing differentials, like just very, very short term. And then we go here. This is much different, completely different methodology, doing completely different math. And it also says, be careful, nothing's going on. So if you're thinking about betting the farm today, um, I'd advise against that. Unless you have an ugly farm. But that guy, that's not. Uh, whoa, 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 it's, uh, it's, uh, I guess it's Monday. Like it feels like Tuesday to me because I've been trading since yesterday. So anyways, it's Monday. So we should look at our COT and the biggest thing that we should be looking week over week. Money going to Rand. That's risk on, isn't it? Yeah, risk on. U.S. dollar down, rand up. Okay. How about a, uh, an increase in bullishness for the pound? I think that's a couple of weeks in a row. Money going into the Kiwi. See, not only did we get more bulls, but we have less bears. Sweet. I mean, that's... Truly a change. So keep your eye there. Some money going into no diggity, no Dow. Kind of, not really. Less people short. But it is less bears. Okay. Less bears is a start. Yen. Uh, let's see. 24,000 less bears. <laughs> what do you think? Did they get stopped out? When uh, the yens drop 1,000 pips, uh huh, which means if you're long pound yen, you're not. If you're long Aussie yen, you're not. If you're long USD yen, you're not. The, the death of the carry trade is happening before your eyes. And there are 24,000 less contracts <laughs> week over week selling yen. It's legit, it's real. We can see those moves are real. Okay. And this is nice. Look at this. 31,500 people bought the 10 year and 48,000 got out of their shorts. Wowzer. Now the volumes is really high, but it's small because it's a very liquid mar market, okay? One million short contracts, so 48,000 is nothing. <laughs> but, but anyways, uh, while there were a lot of people um, trying to make money by shorting, and uh, it ain't working anymore. And as we know, you should have bought it a month ago to lock in those high yields. But anyways, uh, so but it's, it's happening. And uh, institutionally, okay. I mean, look, six and a half more, six and a half percent more bulls, more buyers buying the 10 year treasury. I'd argue they're about three weeks late, but everybody has their time. It's, it was right for them at that time. Actually, didn't the CIA, we bought a bunch of 20s last year, uh, last month, right? Last week, I should say. So would that come up in this report? That'd be the next. But anyways, we're part of this 6.5, basically. And uh, 4.3 less bears. So, you know, look, it's happening. It's happening. And uh, everybody's getting out of the Japanese stock market. It's been a big run. Lots of people have been long the Japanese stock market for a couple of years. Uh, we definitely see people getting out, don't we? 
it's not bears it's just everyone taking profit you see that it's just profit taking people are out they've been in it for years and all this stuff we've been watching the potential change in uh interest rates the potential change in yield curve control the potential change in the carry trade remember if japan raises interest rates and the united states cuts interest rates then it kills the carry trade so why should you be long people are deciding it's time to not be long they're not selling they're just not long anymore the carry trade's dead and we see it isn't it nice to have the data and just see it now we know what's going on and remember when it was still at 150 remember well this would have been at investor boot camp i was showing that the usd yen is at 150 and i said and we were there for a couple of weeks after rallying for two years all of a sudden we're up there two or three weeks at around the the 150 psychological level and i said look Everyone's moving their stops closer and closer and closer. These are all profitable trades. Everybody's long, but we're moving all these stops closer and closer, you know, to 147, to 148, to 149. It's getting closer. And I said, one more snowflake and you can start a major avalanche. That's it. Because suddenly one person took profit, hit someone else's stop, hit someone else's stop. Remember, these stops are taking people out for profit and that's all this is us an avalanche of stops being triggered quickly boom, boom 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 and those thousand pips we made we made them in a couple of days it takes months to make a thousand pips on the upside and it took days i mean a handful of days to make a thousand on the way down and you might want to watch that and see if it if it will continue okay bank of japan uh, and I said this two weeks ago, so you should keep your eye on it. Not only could they raise to zero, but, but you should be thinking that they're on their way to 0 0.8, 0 0.75, 0 0.8, maybe in a couple of years, 1%. And you're like, that's impossible. No, no, that's actually considered low. <laughs> okay. So you can still have a carry trade. But the thing is, if everybody else is cutting while the Bank of Japan is raising, that differential, the spread narrows. Okay. So anyways, uh, lovely. Thank you, Quantbox. I love you so much. That's so nice. Okay. Very cool. Seasonality. What week are we on? What week of the year is it ba, ba, ba. you should just tell me did i not type it right it's week 51 wow we were just at week 41 huh remember that week 51 we're here Next week, so a slightly up week this week. Slightly down week next week, holidays. And then there your Santa Claus rally. And to show you the shape of the year, so this is cumulative. That's, I keep laughing at that. That's not the right word, I believe, but I wrote it. Sorry. It's my fault. I don't think that's a word, but anyways, I think, isn't it cumulative? I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if look at the shape of the year. So we're in, you know, we're at week 51 and it's like boop boop. Okay, that's all. Up this week, down. And not by much, right? 4.9 4.93 and then end the year 5 Point one two. Cool. And then we got to start over all over again. And you see, right, the first few weeks, and I've been teaching this for a very long time. I mean, decades I've been teaching this. 
be ready for profit taking the first week of January. What causes this? Fed policy? Niet. Any, uh, taxes? No, not Texas. The great state of tech taxes. <laughs> the taxes. Taxes. See, we're in week 51. If you were in a trade right now and you decided to take profit week 51 or next week, well, the markets aren't even open, but let's say you do it next week. It's a down week. Ah, okay, great. Then you pay taxes in March. February, March is when you start paying your taxes as a business, okay? Not April, okay? All right, cool. If you take profit in week one, you pay taxes in February, March in 2025. Well, what? <laughs> you pay in three months or 15 months, you choose. So very often, if you hang to the end, pachow, okay, then you can see there's not a lot of up for a while. Then there's a bit of a false rally, and then it comes back down, and then we start to build up. So I'm trying to keep dry powder until about tw week 12. Okay. So anyways, you can start planning your taxes. <laughs> now, some of this profit taking happens now in week 51 because you got to do it before you get into uh, the holiday period is a tough time to do a business. You waited a long time, but you could do wash sales where, um, let's say, if you're managing a portfolio and um, you in your mandate, you say you can have no position larger than 5%. But your NVIDIA doubled in price, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. You have some stock that have done very, very, very well. And as a percentage of your portfolio might be at like 7%. And you're like, you're not actually supposed, you have too much NVIDIA. You have too much whatever really, really worked. But you're also going to have some dogs, right? Some of your stocks didn't do well in your portfolio. You might have a couple that are negative too. So you're going to like, you're going to try to in now before year end, you can take profit and rebalance this back to five and then take that profit. And then, so now you got to pay taxes on your profit that you just realized, right? So you sold a couple of that hundred shares or whatever. Now you got to pay taxes on that money you just made, but then you have a loser and you want to wash all your losers off as you rebalance. Remember, you're not actually selling. You don't, I mean, you still love that stock. You just have too much of it now because it's gone up more. So you're required based on your disclosure documents and, and your memorandums with your investors. So you're required to thin the herd on this one. So now you're going to pay taxes and then you take all your losers and you wipe them off. And you try to balance that and get that as close to zero as possible so that this year's tax bill is as small as possible. And then January 1st, <laughs> you take profit and you pay yourself because, you know, bonuses show up in February, let's say, February, March. So this is the one you take your big tax on. And then you don't pay taxes for 15 months. Cool. Now that's a float. So you take that amount of money, you put it aside, and then you invest that into treasuries and you make money on the money you're holding to pay taxes. If you're smart, that's how you do it anyways. If we were big, large hedge funds. Can you imagine if you had like a, you knew you had a $150 million tax bill coming? Put $150 million aside, buy some treasuries, make 4%, you're good on that dead money. All right. Anywho, so there's the there's the shape of the world as we see it. Lots of stuff going on. Mm -mm -mm. What is the date? Is it? It's the 18th already. That's crazy. All right. So let's take a look. Some housing news in Kenyatta. 
Okay, remember interest rates are coming down. That's good for the market. One thing you want to track if you're going to trade real estate or invest in real estate, really. Um, when one thing you can look at is you can look at the average 30 year mortgage, and it, it's now below 7% in the United States. It was at 8% at one point. Nobody buys at eight. Okay. Um, but seven, six, five, you know, yeah, it's interesting. Jessica's like, hey, top 1% problems. No, it's just business, actually. It's just business. Right? You don't, it doesn't have to be like the $150 million, doesn't have to be. It could be 150,000. You still want to do it. It's the same game. <clears throat> okay. Where you like that smarty pants, and I forget his name now, what fund he was in. <clears throat> but he was able to put money into his Roth IRA, which is post-tax money. So you already pay taxes. You <clears throat> And you're allowed to put not much, like six grand a year or something. So over the course of a year, he built that up. But what he was doing was he was investing, because now you're allowed to invest that into almost anything you want tax-free, and you never pay taxes on anything. And he was doing VC deals. So with his 60 grand or 600 grand, no, you, you wouldn't have had that much. Yeah, was, but, but he was buying for pennies on the dollar, of course. He was investing into the high tech startups that his company, his fund was investing in. <clears throat> so he was buying, you know, I don't know, let's just say, uh, I don't know, whatever. So he's just co-investing his personal money with the corporate money, right? Into VC funds. And he turned that into something like $20 million, <laughs> his Roth IRA. <laughs> And the thing with the Roth IRA in the United States, because you already pay taxes on it and it's considered a retirement account, the deal you have with the government is you never pay any taxes on any profits you make, ever. And all of a sudden, he's got a Roth IRA with $20 million in it, tax-free. It's just, and so Congress is like, we need to change that. <laughs> we need to change the rules. So anyways. Yeah, <clears throat> that's how you do it. Holy smokes. Yeah. But in the United States, if you were if you had a, a small Forex trading account, um, you, you could you should probably consider doing a Roth IRA. So every year you could put in six thousand, I think, year after year after year, popping in another six thousand, keep playing with it, but you never pay taxes ever on the money you make. Free and clear. <clears throat> it's a better way of opening up a small account, like a five thousand dollar account. Don't don't do it with your loose money. Do it with your retirement. You just can't spend it. That's all. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Let's move on. <clears throat> RBA meeting minutes. Yep. You got the Bank of Japan somewhere. Did I skip past it? Is it just not on here? We'll see. Bank of Japan, I know, is on my mind. I guess it's a little bit later. <clears throat> RBA meeting minutes. European CPI. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Year over year inflation is really what we're looking at. Look how low it is. It's amazing. I mean, when you look at the charts that Quantbox can produce for you, um, this was extraordinarily high, and now it's not. Just And it happened so fast. Maybe a base effect kind of thing. Okay, inflation out of Canada. We're very interested. We want to see Canada winning, uh, dropping below 3.0. Okay, cool. That'd be great. That'd be great. 
So we go, we definitely have some Canada action. We going back up. I'm just scrolling up. I know it's hard to follow. So Euro Aussie. Yeah, like I'm not really that interested in the Euro stuff. I, I think it's just gonna get run over by anything the any Fed official, whatever they say is more important than Christine Lagarde, what she says. Now, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Um, obviously, she's the head of an entire central bank. But as far as current market sentiment, the market is very interested in what the Fed's going to do next year. Are they going to cut? When are they going to cut? When are they going to cut? When are they going to cut? And that just is going to be more powerful than all this European news. Uh, I look at RBA. That's very interesting to me. The CAD stuff, eh. the RBA meeting minutes, faux show, because uh, people are interested uh, when when to get you know when to get long. Okay, I got to scroll back up here. Um, okay, global dairy prices. Don't forget Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. What currency moves based on the that data set? New Zealand. There you go. Kiwi dollar. Cool. Uh, 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 okay, this is the private oil release. We're, okay, this is really what starts the oil week. Um, the bigger news, of course, is Wednesday when it when it's uh, EIA, not API. But nonetheless, trading this one, and it's in the stock course actually, is actually more important. It starts with this and then you can get the, the flow through. So then we have all this Japanese news Tuesday night. Yeah, so uh, 15 hours from now. So it's actually tonight, which is tomorrow for them. Anyways, um, big deal. Interest rate decision, no changes expected. But it's time to start talking about it, right? Right? The two things of interest, are they going to jack up interest rates to zero? And or are they going to adjust yield curve control above one? Probably nothing will be said. But, you know. His lips say no, but his eyes say yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it's important. And if you're managing other people's money, it's important to say, well, you know what? I stayed up very, very, very late just to watch the Bank of Japan meeting, even though I expected nothing to change. <laughs> right? It's That would be an important thing. And uh, I guess we don't have to go too far out into the week. Okay. Yeah, and then just lots of Euro stuff. So Kiwi and Aussie, I think, are the ones you should watch a lot. And the yen could be interesting over the next couple of days. And with that, that's our holiday week. Um, I expect volatility to be higher than normal because I expect vol uh, volume to be lower than normal. If you've already made your bonus target, you're not going to trade this week. Okay? Okay. Enrique says, when you looked at the central bank projections on Quantbox and saw uh, interest rate raises, yeah, for the BOJ, right, all the way to 0 0.8, right, Enrique? Yeah, that's I, that's why I brought that up uh, last meeting. So I've mentioned it a few times in our conversation. It's The thing is, it's not on the lips of market participants. The zeitgeist, the lexicon. Um, nobody's talking about that right now. All they're talking about is getting back to zero. But with Quantbox, and why don't I just show this? Uh, 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 uh. 
So we don't want to be too smart. The, you always have to put into check that our job is to trade with the market. We're not trying to beat the market um, because what will happen is you'll, you'll be too smart and you'll trade what you know, but nobody else knows it. <laughs> okay, so uh, you have to kind of be wait and be patient, right? The market is like, uh, I don't know, babysitting children. You're not supposed to hit them. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. So you just got to be patient, okay? And let them catch up. They'll figure it out eventually, but you'll be along for the ride. But yeah, so here we are, negative interest uh, rates. And then, uh, you know, and then we work our way to zero, okay? Because remember, that's sort of the mean, but zero. And then, yeah, it starts heading up. Yeah. Yeah. While the Fed is cutting. So the smart money is taking profit on the, all those carry trades. Okay. And you start to like, okay, the, you know, if you thought this was going to happen, if you were smart money and you thought this was going to happen and we're here, then you start to trade it before it's happened. The market is supposed to be 30 days to three months, maybe even six months ahead in their thought process. So the smartest money when we were sitting at 150, at the top, it was still bullish. And the Bank of Japan told us this in their data. People are like, top. And it's turned from, right? So with cheap money, all the yens are going up. So just look at all this. Yen's going up. Yen's going up. Yen's going up. Yen yen pairs going up. 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 Yen pairs coming down. Yen pairs coming down. Yen pairs coming down. Yen pairs. And so, anyways, the smartest money is already trying to get that in. The dumber money will keep doing what worked the last two years. Somebody's got to be dumb money. It just shouldn't be us. But the dumber thing is to bet against what's actually happening because you're so smart, right? Uh, the market rules, man. The market, right? So it's it's hard. You gotta you gotta have that projection in the back of your mind, but then use market conditions to set things up with timing and seasonality and stuff. But at least we know. Well, it's not what they said; it's what they report. So I believe this number doesn't come from the Bank of Japan directly, but it comes from the OECD that's pulling the data from the Bank of Japan. <laughs> okay, so anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's the uh, the OECD, right? So you, you have to look at that up. But it's, a, it's an international institution that tracks basically all the rich countries of the world. Okay, so anyways. Uh, so nice, nice. So just like, hmm, well, you know what? The carry trade might be over. And so when I say things like that, this is what I'm talking about. I don't just make it up. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Nice to know. Huh? Not just a pretty face. Yeah. All right. I got to bounce. That was real. Be careful this week because, like I was saying, we might have lower volume than normal. With lower volume... One player can come in and manipulate the market a little bit more than normal. <clears throat> like Paul Tudor Jones could see that and just all of a sudden go in with a huge leverage move and push the market up on, uh, let's say, a dollar on oil, take profit, and then exit. Normally, you wouldn't be able to do that because there'd be too much volume you're fighting. But some degenerate gamblers will do that in a week like this. Excuse me. <clears throat> Man, this geese sticks in the back of my throat. So anyways, stuff like that could happen. But also then, like, that's just a trader taking advantage of low vol volatility right? or low volume. So that, that's an opportunistic hedge fund. What about the worst of the worst? The hedge fund managers that have missed the whole move this year because they were doing, I don't know, the wrong things at, at the wrong time. And now they're down to two weeks. Maybe they're not even trying to make bonuses. What if they're just trying to get back to zero? 
And they're like, dude, this fund is going to blow up next week anyways. Everyone's going to look at plus 25 for the average hedge fund. And then they look at us and we're in negative eight. Like we're dead, dead money, dead man walking, dead man walking, right? So what a smart person would do is contact all their clients and say, hey, we tried our best. We got some things wrong, but we took... We, we took care of your money the best we could. Just things didn't go our way. And we apologize. Yeah, but that's what smart people do. Um, these guys, what they would say is gamble it all. We need to get to plus eight in the next two weeks or negative 100. Because <laughs> we're dead anyways. What does it matter? Right? What does it matter? It's not our money anyways. Right? I've got to pay for my Bentley lease. Yeah, another bad decision with money, right? So, anyways, huh. So it could be interesting in the next few weeks. And are there funds that made mistakes? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And we don't know, right? What will happen in the next 10 weeks. Uh, we don't know their level of desperateness, but uh, I've seen weird things happen before. That's kind of why we get a Santa Claus rally, I think. Just one last Hail Mary. Please, God, <laughs> make the market go up three more percent. Please make S&P 500 go up three more percent. Please, right? Yeah. But you know what? There's 2,000 hedge funds in the United States. Hey, if 300 of them were the ones throwing the, all the Hail Marys all at the same time, maybe they're able to move it. Who knows? Uh, um, but then that means they're going to take profit quick, right? So the bigger the Santa Claus rally, the bigger the fall in the first week of January. So, hey, it's a complicated wor world out there. There's more to it than economics. There's more to it than just um gartley patterns there's a lot um in the business of managing money that affects these markets uh very very complex at least we can uh handle it together so thank you for being a subscriber of quant box right i'll be here tomorrow <laughs> it sounds like a stand-up comedian right i'll be here tomorrow Free, no, only a two drink cover minimum for tomorrow. Yeah, all right. And then I'll be over somewhere else on Wednesday. Oh, no, no, I'll be here here Wednesday and I'll be here Thursday. Yeah, well, I guess I'm here always. So, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. But in all seriousness, normal schedule this week, no schedule next week. Okay, I need to work on my tan. No, I'm not going anywhere cool. That'd be awesome, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. So peace on earth.